Now, but before we um, get into honoring these guys to the, the fullest amount we can, everybody's aware of what happened almost two weeks ago here in the city of Boston. It was something that um, a lot of Iraq and Afghanistan veterans, you probably didn't want to see again watching it up on TV, especially in your own hometown. But in a way, it was quite a wake-up call for a lot of America because they actually saw what Iraq and Afghanistan veterans have been doing for the last 11 years. IED blasts, maimed victims, dead victims, the hunt for the terrorists, the shootout with the terrorists, losing a fellow brother, a fellow officer, It really brought much attention to what's been going on with our veterans. But right now, today, we have some of our first responders from the marathon attacks. And I'd like for them to come out real quick. Now, hold your applause, please, until I uh, tell you who they are exactly. <laughs> Carlos and Melita, they lost their first son early in the, the Iraq war to a sniper bullet. He was killed in action for this country. A few years later, one of their other sons, sons succumbed to the post-traumatic stress disorder and depression when it came to losing a fellow sibling, and he took his own life. And we don't blame him for that, because some of us know what it's like to lose a loved one. But last Monday, Carlos, he's the gentleman you saw with the cowboy hat, who was carrying and helping a gentleman who lost both his legs. This family has sacrificed so much for this country. And I'm glad that his sons put them there as an angel to save more lives at the marathon. So please, here for the tear for Carlos. Please. I want to tell you all of you, when I first break in that broke. When I first jumped that barrier to go help someone, was another Vietnam veteran along my side. His name is John Mixon. John Mixon, what they are also trying to help as much people as he won. So the brothers always in the house. I just saying, you know, set their fight to all of you, you know, and let's do the civil duties like you guys doing. Thank you. Now, I'd like to mention two members of the Boston Police Department. One of them actually was one of my squad leaders in Iraq. I know him as Corporal Levy, but it's Derek Levy. He was there when the bombs went off, applied tourniquets, pressure dressings, ran victims back and forth to the medical tent. And up to my left is Kirk Merricks, another Boston Police Officer who dedicated much of his time through the whole week. So, please. Well, I don't know what else I can say. At this time, I'd like to call the Secretary of Veterans Services uh, for the state of Massachusetts, uh, Coleman E. Hey, thank you very much. I do keep it real short, and I know you want to get uh, you want to hear the rest of these folks and and, and get to uh, celebrate this ride. But I want to thank all the riders that are here today. Uh, specifically, honestly, I want to thank our Gold Star families. Thank you so much for all you're giving for this country. I want to thank our wounded veterans as well. I want to tell you this. We have, do have some of the best services in this country, in this country, but we do treat veterans better in Massachusetts than anywhere else in the world. And that's not just because of one state agency or one federal agency. That's because of all of you. That's because this Commonwealth cares about its veterans and the people that serve the military. For all of you that did serve, we have the Vet Center down there in back. Come on back at some point during the day and make sure you find out about your benefits. Make sure you find out about your services. Let us try and get you those things that you've all assuredly earned. And, and I can tell you that commitment starts not just with myself, but it starts with my boss, who the Secretary of Health and Human Services, John Polanowitz, who not only rode today in this ride, but John's a West Point grad, served in Operation Just Cause. He's a Black Hawk pilot. You want me to say a couple of words? Cool. I first want to thank every one of these men who served our country and served uh, served us here in Massachusetts for everything they've done, and all the service men and women that continue to serve us. 
And then I want to thank each and every one of you, over 3,000 riders raising money for a tremendous cause to help our mass veterans. You guys are making it happen. And before the race, we talked about Rolling Thunder being about the Vietnam vets uh, down in uh, D.C. And I was there last year. It was tremendous. I got to tell you, this is getting to be a tremendous ride here. Thank you to all of you and all that you do. Thank you very much. And just one last shout out. Andrew Biggio does a fantastic job with this ride. Thank you. And, and Carlo Bizzo not only cares about veterans, but he's the chairman of the Vets Committee up on Beacon Hill, and he holds us accountable, and he's doing a great job for veterans as well. And the commissioner of the city of Boston, Vet Services, Francisco Urain, is here as well. Francisco is a Purple Heart recipient from Iraq. Thank you. At this current time, I'd like to uh, call up probably one of the most patriotic politicians I know, He's visited the countries of Iraq and Afghanistan 13 times since the uh, conflicts were going on. He's our acting U.S. Congressman from Massachusetts, and he's currently running for the U.S. Senate. So, um, Mr. Lynch, could you please come out, please? Thank you very much. First of all, I want to I want to thank the Gold Star families for being here, and, and I. I also want to thank Carlo Basil, state representative, who, who helped put this together. Let's have a great round of applause for Andrew Biggio, who is also the backbone of this. I have an opportunity to work with several chapters of Rolling Thunder, but I want to thank everybody from Rolling Thunder and all the riders here today. When I first came to Congress, I had the wonderful honor of being assigned to the, the VA Committee, the Veterans Affairs Committee. So I get to work with people like Coleman Nee, but I also get to, to travel overseas a lot and to work with our sons and daughters in uniform. As Carlo mentioned, I, I, as Andy mentioned, I, I've been to Iraq 14 times, I've been to Afghanistan eight times, but I also work with another group that we can't forget, and that's JPAC. JPAC stands for the Joint POW MIA Accounting Command. And what JPAC does every day, they have a group of about 40 forensic pathologists that work out of Kickham Air Force Base at Pearl Harbor. And what they do is they, they work in three countries, basically. They work in Vietnam, they work in Korea, and they work in the Philippines. Because we as a country, we have about 1,100 of our sons and daughters that did not come home from Vietnam. They remain there. We have about 8,000 of our sons and daughters that did not come home from Korea. And believe it or not, we have 78,000 sons and daughters who did not come home from the Second World War. So what JPAC does is they send out dig teams, recovery teams, to recover the remains of our brothers and sisters, sons and daughters of the United States, and we bring them home. And what they do at JPAC is that they use the DNA, they do DNA analysis, and, and so every year, JPAC is able to return about 160 of our sons and daughters who died overseas, we're able to return them to their families so they can have a decent burial. On my last night in, in Hanoi, I sat across from a group of communist generals. And they said to me this, it stuck with me. They said, you know, the people of Vietnam, we still have great respect for the United States. He said, but it's not for the reasons that you might think. It's not because you're the world's economic superpower. He said, it's not because you're the world's 
military superpower. He said, we have respect for you because of what JPAC is doing in our country. He said, we have respect for you because after 60 years, you are still here in Vietnam trying to recover the bodies of your sons and daughters. That's why we respect you. There's a saying that there is loyalty in the simple act of remembrance. And that's why you are all here. That's why you are all here, because you don't forget. You don't leave anybody behind. And you're there for your brothers and sisters. God bless you all for the work you do every day. Thank you for, for remembering our veterans. Thank you for, for writing in their memory. Thank you for rallying behind our, our wounded warriors. Thank you for not forgetting, and God bless America. Thank you. Yeah, um, also, if you didn't know, oh, actually, you know, I'll call up one more special person. Um, he's the commit. He's right now. He's the chairman of Veteran Services. He's the state representative from East Boston. Okay, and because of this bike run, he proposed legislation to be passed that every wounded veteran gets seventy-five thousand dollars from the state for housing modifications, okay? Now, wait a second. Let's not celebrate that yet. Because, Mr. Basil, if that does not get passed, which I'm sure it will, this bike run's gonna be ending at the State House next year, all right? So, that's, it's not really a threat, but you might wanna get that going, all right? So, at this current time, I'd like to uh, welcome uh, State Representative Carlo Basil, please. All right. Holy shit. Wow. Um, I'll tell you what this run means to me and what it did for me personally. As Andrew said, uh, I was blessed to become chairman of Veteran Services because of this run, because Andrew got me involved. And I was lucky enough for the speaker to pick me at that position. House Bill 3177 will be a reality because of this uh, run. And it's because of Andrew and his persistence. It's actually a pain in the ass, as I always call it. But lastly, uh, I don't want to take anybody's time. I want to thank the sacrifices that the veterans do for this country on behalf of me and my family and the whole state of Massachusetts in this country, thank you. And lastly, um, this is probably where my staff cringes and if the Boston Herald or Globe or media is here, you could quote me on this. Um, a little sick and tired of hearing uh, sympathetic reasons why uh, this happened on Patriots Day. So. To you people, whoever's out there, and I mean this on behalf of me and my two little boys and my family, and I say this emphatically. Thank you. For those filming, I hope there's a five minute delay. Right, time to get down to business. So, <clears throat> the first person I'm going to talk to is right here. It's about it's to my right, and that's Lance Corporal Nick Ufrazio. All right. Okay. Half his cranium is plastic. All right. Just in case you didn't know, titanium as I was. And we're confident that he's going to be walking again. Absolutely. All right. His father's Mark's here, and you know, they really didn't think Nick was going to make it in the hospital. Neither did the doctors or the nurses. But then last minute, he starts to pull through. And so in order to get Mark's house ready, he spent $30,000 out of his own money, and even sold his own motorcycle to take care of his son's house, so they have a good house when he came home. 
Well, for those who don't know, we unveiled a motorcycle for him at Harley Davidson, all right? And it was a custom paint job, custom paint job. You'll see the pictures on Facebook with the Eagle Globe and Anchor, Nick's name, the Purple Heart on it. So I hope you like it. And, uh, you know, is there anything you want to say right now? Thank you. Okay. Yes, you guys, Arlene, the DeForges family, please come up here. All right, so <clears throat> the next person I want to talk to talk about is in the center here, and that's Lance Corporal James Crosby. All right. As you know, he rides a trike. All right. Sorry, sorry, newbie. Uh, James James has been fighting for veterans rights and veterans benefits since he was severely wounded back in 04 if you don't know he's one of the founders of the SAVE program which helps uh, reach out to veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder okay, or that are homeless or that need, just need benefits in general so James is going to be utilizing the money that we raised today for a nice down payment on a house along with his VA home loan, okay? So, we're proud to have done it. Gotta get it down short, you know? I just wanna first off and say thank you, uh, most sincerely to everybody here. Um, you know, like Andrew said, since I got back, uh, I, I had the opportunity to be welcomed back home uh, with open arms, you know, with a lot of other veterans that didn't get, you know, that hospitality when they returned, and, and they didn't want that to happen to us coming back. And uh, I came back in 2004, and uh, you know, a lot of good friends that I made, uh, and they're just other, you know, fellow brothers and sisters, you know, taking care of their own, you know, bringing America together, and that's what uh, that's what I'm all about. That's what my club, the American Infidels, are all about: bringing yeah. Americans together yeah. and telling those terrorists to go. And, all, and a lot of these guys have killed a lot of them, which is really great. Uh, and I say that emphatically. So I'd just like to say, I, I've met a lot of people uh, in this state, and, and I see a lot of them here. And they're really, really good people. And they're the type of people that you'd want to have in your corner, the type of people that can watch your back, the type of people that you can leave your girlfriend or your wife with. And I really do love a lot of the people that are out here today. And I know I met a lot of you guys, and I don't remember everyone's name, but I hope that you remember uh, the thank yous that, that, I, that I'm saying right now, because I really do, uh, this is gonna you know, make a big difference in my life, and, and I just hope to continue to pay it forward. Thank you very much for, for this awesome honor. Uh, thank you. This guy, I know a lot of people say it, but he really works his ass off for stuff like this. This isn't like the only thing he's done. He came and worked with me at the state. He was helping veterans saving their lives uh, when we worked with Coleman Nee at the state for veteran services. So he saved people's lives. He started Mass Fallen Heroes, you know, with Dan Magoon down there, and raised hundreds of thousands of dollars, and he continues to do it now. So he's a pretty good guy to have in your corner, and I'm pleased to, to call him my friend. Thank you. All right, our third recipient for this year. I still can't get over looking out into the crowd. There's thousands of people here. This started as just a small bike run out of the Italian American War Veterans Post in East Boston, and now it's the biggest one in New England. So, at this time, I'd like to have Captain Jake Murphy, please come up, okay? Like I said, Jake lost his legs in Afghanistan. About two years ago, West Point graduate leading his men in Afghanistan, and the money raised today is right there, okay, for him. And that's a Volkswagen for his wife, so they don't have to share the same car, okay? Now, Joe Detremont, would you like to give Lisa the keys to her car, please? 
And Jake, anything you want to say? Well, question for Ryan, huh? Uh, yeah, I just want to say, since I got hurt, the amount of support outpouring from all realms has been unbelievable. Starting with Lisa here, my fiance. She hasn't run off the car yet. Um, we met up near Fort Drum when I got hurt in Afghanistan. She stuck by my side through a coma and through all my rehabilitation. So I can't thank you enough, Lisa. And then my family, of course, and just everywhere else from New England Patriots to Bob Kraft to the Red Sox. Everyone's just been so supportive. So. I would say Boston's a pretty great city. So thank you guys for coming out. And thank Andrew for putting on such an amazing event. And I really appreciate everyone's participation and Andrew being such a good guy doing all this for me and Lisa and all the other veterans out there. All right, thank you. And this Saturday, they're going to be married, these two. So, all right? Give her a kiss, Jake. Tom, our commander from the Italian American War Veterans, we'd like to present you with the flag that we just gave out. Somebody dropped their keys. Come up and get them. It's the last person, last time I'm probably going to mention it. You dropped your keys. They're up here. All right. Um, so, if you don't mind. Now, obviously the wounded are not the only ones that have been affected by war. And if you, didn't, if you were riding and you saw like the 150 crosses that came in, that was to represent the sum 150 plus service members who sacrificed their lives from Massachusetts and in Iraq and Afghanistan. That being said, the, one, the other ones affected by war are the Gold Star families. Some people actually don't know what Gold Star families are, but that's someone who's lost a loved one in a time of war. So I'd like our Gold Star families to enter the stage as soon as the wounded veterans are off the ramp. Actually, Dottie, start with you. I'm just going to have your attention. They're going to mention their son or daughter's name. And then followed by... You're going to have to make a hole because they're going to go lay a wreath down at Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans Memorial we have here. My son was Captain Christopher James Sullivan. He was um, killed in Iraq January 18, 2005. Christopher put together the plan for the 325 voting places for the first Iraqi vote. Hi, my name is Tracy Valancourt. My son is PFC Brian Moquin. He was killed May 5th, 2006 in Afghanistan, um, along with nine fellow soldiers when their helicopter went down. Because of his loss, I was devastated, but I was determined not to let that ruin me. And because of that loss, I was able to become vice president of Project New Hope. And we do free weekend retreats for veterans, their families, and also Gold Star families of fallen soldiers. I also have his 7th annual memorial ride coming up on June 8th in Worcester. Um, so if any of you are interested in attending, you can stop at our booth down there for Project New Hope and see us. Thank you. Thank you all for being here, and thank you all the veterans for your service. And Andrew, thank you for everything you do. Today marks his today marks the sixth anniversary um, of his death. He was killed April 27, 2007. 
in October of 2006. He was named EOD of the Year, and I'm incredibly proud of him. I'm very blessed for all of you. Thank you. Our son was jo Sergeant Joshua DeForge. He was killed May 12, 2010. Send one upstairs to the boy. Hello, my name is Stacy Pirelli. Um, I'm from Franklin, Massachusetts, and I lost my brother, Staff Sergeant Robert Ryan Pirelli, in Iraq, August 15th, 2007. And thank you so much for coming. It's amazing how many people are here. Hi, you doing? I'm Russ Carria. My son is PFC Eric Carria. He was killed February 17, 2010, in Afghanistan. And actually, I got one of my son's honor guards to my left. He was there for my son when we laid him down. Also, on June 2nd, we have the third annual memorial bike run in memory of my son out of Bethune, Massachusetts. Uh, there was a bunch of cards handed out to everybody as they were coming in. So everyone just come down, show your support. All the proceeds go to take Gold Star children to any camp in the country that they want to go to. It's a very lovely cause. Lance Corporal Alexander Scott Arredondo was a native of Randolph, Massachusetts. He was my blessed stepson. He died at the age of 20 in the siege of Najaf on August 25th, 2004. And my husband Carlos and I have been working on improving benefits for both veterans and the families of the fallen and military families, as well as the prevention of suicide among family members, and of course, the veterans. God bless you all. All right, just one more thing to say before we get our music going and everyone can enjoy themselves is that I've been to a million events and so has my grandfather. Whenever I ask, <clears throat> whenever I ask for Gold Star families to come up, he never comes up, he always sits down. But the truth is, my grandfather lost his brother in World War II, all right? And he is a Gold Star brother. And uh, Papa, I just want you to be recognized today because you never are. So that's my Uncle John Vigil. My grandfather John Vigil.